Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. I'm your host, Sean Ian, and in today's video we'll be answering the question, what is a path? This builds on the idea of trails and walks, so if you don't know what those are, I recommend watching my lessons on those and then coming back. Let's get into it. So of course, we begin with this beautiful graph G, and we are going to describe a way of moving through G. So let's say we start down here at V1, and then we move up to V2. Then we head over here to V3, we go up to V6, then let's say we go over to V7, and then we end down at V8. Then what we have just described is a path in the graph G. And how can we represent that path? Well, we'll call it P, and just like with trails and walks, we can write this as a sequence of vertices, beginning, of course, with the vertex we started at, then the next vertex we went to, and so on. Then we went to V3, then we went to V6, then to V7, and then we finished at V8. That is where we came to a stop. So this sequence of vertices in the graph G defines our path, but what makes it a path? Well, just like with trails and walks, the consecutive vertices in the sequence are adjacent in the graph. So all of these consecutive vertices, we can see they are joined by an edge in the graph G. So when we started at V1, for example, we could only go to V2. We can't go to V3 because it's not adjacent to V1. That is, we have to travel through edges. Remember that in a walk, we could traverse both edges and vertices multiple times. In a trail, we could traverse vertices multiple times, but not edges. In a path, we are not allowed to traverse vertices multiple times, which means that we're also not allowed to traverse edges multiple times. Because, for example, if you traversed the edge V2, V3 multiple times, then either this vertex or this vertex would have to be repeated. So you can't repeat vertices in a path, thus you can't repeat edges either. This is sometimes referred to as a simple path, and just the word path refers to something different, but usually, in my experience, this is what we call a path. So again, this is a path because it's a sequence of vertices where consecutive vertices are adjacent in the graph and no vertex is repeated. And that is what a path is. But let me move this up here and show you one other way that we can write paths, walks, and trails. We've been doing it in this way where we just list out a sequence of vertices, but there's another way it is also sometimes done and often defined as. So instead of just being a sequence of vertices, it can also be written as a sequence of alternating vertices and edges. So you would start with the vertex we begin at, then you put the edge that you travel. Then you put the vertex you're at. Then you put the edge you travel. So you can see vertex we start at, which was V1 right here. Then we traveled the edge V1, V2. So that's what came next in the sequence. Then from that point, we were at V2. So we put V2. Then we traveled the edge V2, V3. So we put V2, V3. Then we're at V3. So what comes next in the sequence is the vertex V3. Then we traverse the edge V3, V6. Then we were at V6. Then we traverse the edge V6, V7. Then we were at V7. We traverse the edge V7, V8. And then of course we ended at V8. So if you write a path trail or a walk in this way, it's a sequence of alternating vertices and edges. It begins with a vertex and it ends with a vertex. And of course, after each vertex, you put the edge that you traveled, then the vertex you're at, then the edge you travel, and so on. Now, as you can tell, this way of writing out the path is much more concise than this way. And I prefer this way because it conveys the same information much more simply. Because since we went from V1 to V2, you know that we had to have traversed this edge. So even though we don't explicitly state that we traversed this edge, like we do down here, where we write out V1, V2, it's obvious that that is the edge we must have traversed. But I wanted to make it clear that this method of defining a path, a trail, and a walk is sometimes used. But that's what a path is. It's a sequence of vertices in a graph such that consecutive vertices are adjacent and no vertex appears more than once. 
you could think of paths as being how we move from one location to another. So for example, if I want to go from where I currently am to the nearest Walmart, which is 45 minutes away, then I'm just going to traverse some roads, pass through some towns, but of course I'm not going to traverse any one town or any road multiple times. That wouldn't make any sense because I'm just trying to get to my destination. And that's what a path is like. It's got vertices, it's got edges that you're traversing, but you don't traverse any of them more than once. I'll also mention that there are graphs that we refer to as paths. We call them path graphs but we'll talk more about that in another lesson. So I hope this video helped you understand what paths are. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. I can't wait.